who is better, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Tennessee Titans? In this video, I will compare each roster position by position to determine who is the more talented team going into the AFC Championship game in 2020, the Titans or the Chiefs. This is not a comparison or a prediction on who I believe is going to actually win the game. This is a analysis on who is the more talented roster, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Tennessee Titans. Before I break down the Titans and the Chiefs, Gronk spike the like button, subscribe to the bottom line view for more NFL videos just like this, and comment below your opinion. Who is the more talented team, the Chiefs or the Titans? Let's kick off the comparison with the quarterback position, Patrick Mahomes versus Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill was the hottest quarterback coming into these playoffs, the best yards per attempt the top passer rating in the NFL with a 117 passer rating. But throughout these playoffs, Ryan Tannehill has kind of taken a back seat to the running game of Derrick Henry and to the Dean Pease defense of the Tennessee Titans. He hasn't really had to do a lot. He hasn't even really had to throw for 100 yards, which is a crazy thing. I expect him to have a bigger role in this game, but there is no doubt about it that Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in this game, and the Chiefs take the first category. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL, and if you didn't already think that, he proved it last week in the divisional round with that epic comeback over the Houston Texans. He has a velocity on his football that's next level. Accuracy on the run, in the pocket, the arm angles to escape pressure. He's incredible. He is the best quarterback right now in the game. And even with injuries throughout the season, he still put up 26 touchdowns, only five picks, 4,000 yards, a 105 passer rating. Mahomes is the man, and the Chiefs win the quarterback position. At the running back position, the Tennessee Titans. This is also probably just as obvious as the quarterback position. Derrick Henry is maybe the best running back in football right now. At least he is in terms of the guys left in the playoffs. Derrick Henry is playing epically. I don't know how else to describe it. He is a man among boys. Derrick Henry, of course, led the NFL in rushing yards this season. But what he's done in the playoffs to the number one seed Baltimore Ravens and the number one defense in the NFL the New England Patriots, has been nothing short of spectacular. 1,500 yards this season, a 5.1 yards per carry, and 16 rushing touchdowns. Derrick Henry is a load to take down. And in the open field, you can forget about it because he combines that size with really deceptive speed where he can take it to the house just as good as any other running back in the game. You combine Derrick Henry with Deion Lewis, who we haven't seen a ton of these playoffs, but he is a capable running back, especially catching the football with 25 receptions this season. For the Chiefs, Damian Williams has actually been their guy as of late, and I expect him to have a role in this game. He is actually really underrated as a receiver out of the backfield. He also ran for 498 yards, a 4.5 yards per carry, and five touchdowns throughout the regular season. And then you might see a variety of other backup backs for the Chiefs, but none of them measure up to the load, the monster Derrick Henry. At the wide receiver and tight end positions, the Tennessee Titans actually have one of the more underrated groups in the NFL when it comes to tight ends, wide receivers. The Tennessee Titans use a lot of formation variety. They use a lot of two tight end sets. They use a lot of three receiver sets. A.J. Brown as a rookie, 52 receptions, over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns. Jonu Smith at tight end taking over for Delaney Walker, 35 catches, 439 yards and three touchdowns and a spectacular catch in the divisional round versus the Baltimore Ravens, is in my opinion the most underrated, least talked about 
tight end in the NFL. They also have Corey Davis, a former high first round pick, who contributes as the number two receiver, caught a touchdown in that Baltimore game, and Sharp, who's mostly their slot guy. Adam Humphreys has been injured, and Sharp has taken a large majority of the snaps within the slot, 25 catches, 329 yards, and four touchdowns. The Titans have a nice group, but the Kansas City Chiefs may have the best group of receivers and tight ends in football. Tyreek Hill is the ultimate game-changing weapon. Whether that's getting a reverse in the run game, getting a deep pass, a crosser, whatever it may be, Tyree Kill is almost impossible to guard in one-on-one -on -one man coverage. You have to double team him. And then you have Mikol Hardman, who is a rookie, but almost as explosive as Tyree Kill, as you'll see in the return game, but also on offense on the occasional deep route down the field. Sammy Watkins is a nice complimentary receiver within this offense, 52 catches this season. Demarcus Robinson may have had a little bit of a rough time early in the game, but he's a nice number four, probably one of the better ones in the league. And then, of course, you have Travis Kelsey, who had a monstrous performance versus the Houston Texans last week with over 10 catches, over 100 yards, multiple touchdowns. He is another guy that is very difficult to cover with one player because he's such a shifty, quick tight end, a great route runner, and a great chemistry with his quarterback. He basically takes a very dynamic, hybrid-type safety corner player, or you're going to have to double-team him. That's going to be a big task for the Tennessee Titans. The Chiefs give you so many different options to just absolutely abuse you with that you cannot go with anybody but the Chiefs in this category. The offensive line is by far the most difficult position in this comparison to decide is it the Chiefs or is it the Titans. For me, I'm personally going to go with the Tennessee Titans. I just have not seen many offensive lines dominate the way they have in the run game. Tennessee, their strength is blocking in the run game. Kansas City's is blocking in the pass game. When you look at the numbers, sack rate, Tennessee ranks last in the league at 32nd, Kansas City ranks fourth. You then flip it to adjusted line yards, which shows the push in the run game, and Tennessee is fourth, and Kansas City's 28th. So, Tennessee's great at run blocking, Kansas City's great at pass blocking. But again, what Tennessee has been able to do in dominating their opponents they haven't even needed to pass the ball yet, these playoffs. The standouts, Lawan and Conklin at tackle, Saffold and Jones inside for Tennessee, and definitely Mitchell Schwartz, I feel, is the best lineman in this game that will touch the field on the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm giving the advantage to the Titans because of their recent dominant performance physically. Now let's flip the side of the football to the defense. The big boys in the middle of the defense. That's the interior defensive line. I am giving this category to the Tennessee Titans, which might be a little bit surprising, I guess, because the Kansas City Chiefs do have the best player. That's Chris Jones. Chris Jones had nine sacks. He ranked seventh by PFF this season and overall is one of the most disruptive pass rushers on a down-in, down-out basis at any position. He didn't play last game, versus the Houston Texans. He's expected to play in the AFC Championship game, but he might be a little bit slower than he usually is. That's taken into account. But when you look at the depth and the way that the Titans are currently playing, they just held the best rushing attack of all time to their lowest, most inefficient performance we've seen from them all season in the Baltimore Ravens. And a lot of that had to do with Jarrell Casey dominating the middle of the defensive line. You have Daquan Jones. He ranked in the top 25 this season as an interior player for PFF as well. Simmons has been a nice addition as a rookie, making an immediate impact in the interior pass rush, but also as a run defender. And Johnson as well in the inside. They go four or five deep. Both of these teams actually go four or five deep. And Kansas City had a huge weakness last year when it came to defending the run and even earlier this season. But Kansas City has been a lot better in that regard. When you look at the adjusted line yards, Tennessee is 10th. Kansas City is 28th. Run DVOA, 
Tennessee is 10th again, and Kansas City is 29th. So when comparing run defenses, when comparing recent play, and taking into account the injuries, I am taking the Tennessee Titans and Jarrell Casey for this category. The edge position was probably the most difficult to decide who I was going to give this position the advantage to, the Chiefs or the Titans. Frank Clark and Harold Landry. These are the two standouts on either side. Landry had nine sacks this season. Clark had eight sacks this season. Clark had a massive performance versus the Houston Texans in the divisional round, and I would say is the best player on either team at this spot. T. Sizzle, we know, was brought in from the Kansas City Chiefs to play a role, and he has played a role, but he's not T. Sizzle the way that we know him in his heyday. And Correa, not a bad player for Tennessee, five sacks this season, a pretty good run defender more than anything. Honestly, this could go either way. I'm going to give it to the Kansas City Chiefs, and the only reason I'm giving it to the Kansas City Chiefs is I just saw Frank Clark fully healthy, 100% dominate, and I just don't know if the Tennessee Titans have a player like Frank Clark who can take over a game pass rushing wise, so I'm going to give this to the Kansas City Chiefs. And the home field will definitely help them get after the quarterback. At the linebacker position, this is clearly the Tennessee Titans. The Chiefs, although they have improved at this position this season, I don't see them being anywhere near the talent that the Tennessee Titans have. And this has helped them be one of the top 10 teams versus the run this year. Jayon Brown is expected to come back and play a big role in this game probably as a blitzer cover guy to help out versus Travis Kelsey, possibly Damian Williams, and also maybe even spy Patrick Mahomes. Evans has been spectacular all playoffs long with 111 tackles, which I believe led the team. And Wesley Woodyard is a nice veteran piece who is definitely getting super pumped after their win versus Baltimore. Now Hitchens, Damian Wilson, these guys are not bad, and like I said, better than last year. Hitchens led the team with 88 tackles this year. He's okay, better versus the run, I would say. Both of them are kind of bigger bodies. Damian is more of the cover guy. Hitchens is more of the downhill run-stuffing type. But definitely Tennessee has more versatility, more athletic ability. They can pass rush a little bit. They can cover a little bit, and they can definitely defend the run. So I'm going with the Tennessee Titans at the linebacker position. In the secondary, despite Kansas City during the regular season being the better of the two units, ranking 6th in past DVOA, and Tennessee only ranking 21st, I'm going to give the advantage to the Tennessee Titans. I think both of these teams have slept on secondaries, but get me with this one. I really like Logan Ryan as a do-it-all corner who can play nickel, he could play a little bit of safety, he could play outside, he could take usually the slot receiver on the opposing team. And Logan Ryan is just a straight up playmaker, especially this season where he led the team in tackles. He had four and a half sacks. He had four forced fumbles. He had four interceptions. What didn't this guy do? He filled up the stat sheet, had a huge pick in the game versus the New England Patriots. Adoree Jackson is probably the best man-to-man -man corner that can take a true number one receiver in this game on either side, so that's a big thing. Adoree Jackson has the height to take on some taller guys and definitely the deep speed where he can take on one of the faster receivers on the Chiefs, probably going to be assigned Tyreek Hill. Brock has been, I know he's old, but an amazing addition to this secondary ranking 17th by PFF and really upgraded this secondary a ton and come in huge because they lost Malcolm Butler in the middle of the season and they really needed a guy to come in and replace him and Brock has done that very, very well. Had a great game versus Baltimore. Bayard is one of the best free safeties in the game. Five interceptions, ranked eighth by PFF. Vaccaro is the versatile guy, can really hit hard when he needs to and wants to. He could play in the box. He could cover tight ends. He could cover running backs. Vaccaro is a nice, versatile piece that I like. Looking at the Chiefs, they also have their players. I mean, Ward has really come into his own this season. 10 pass deflections. Claiborne has been a nice addition. Fuller has been solid. Matthew has been amazing. I mean, he was in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation. 
Four interceptions, 12 pass deflections, ranking 23rd for PFF. Sorensen is the weak spot, although he had a great game versus Houston. He is replacing Thornhill at the safety position. I'm giving it to Tennessee because I think they have the best man-to-man, number one guy in Adoree Jackson. They have the biggest playmaker in Logan Ryan. And then when you basically cross out Tyron Matthew and Bayard, who are both incredible playmakers at safety... I think Vaccaro is better than Sorensen. So give me the Titans secondary over the Chiefs going into the AFC Championship game. Now for the special teams. I am giving this one to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now this is a little bit risky, I guess. But Kansas City's playing at home. And I trust Butker a lot more in the Arrowhead. Potentially windy weather, snowy conditions potentially. To kick the big game winning kick. Then Joseph, who really hasn't been tested very much. I'm going with Butker there at the kicker position. Now, clearly Kern is the better punter. He's the best punter in the league, in my opinion. Also, PFF believes that as well, ranking him first. But Kansas City is also ranked in the top 10 in offensive starting position and defensive starting position. And as we saw in that game versus Houston, yes, they did get a block punt, but their returners are special. Hardman, Hill, whoever it is returning the punts or kicks, they can return at any time they touch the ball. So give me Kansas City special teams unit, mostly for the kicking and the ability to return kicks. And at the head coaching spot, it's Mike Vrabel versus Andy Reid. I love both of these guys for different reasons. Mike Vrabel for his toughness, for his leadership, and for his team believing in him. And then you look at Andy Reid and his offensive prowess, his experience in these moments. I have to give the edge to Andy Reid. I actually would not hate on you for giving the advantage to Mike Vrabel because Andy Reid has struggled in moments like these before. But Andy Reid's ability to draw up offensive football is one of the best in the game. And his experience, I think, comes in handy here in the AFC Championship, so I'm giving the coaching edge to Andy Reid. Don't sleep on the Tennessee Titans roster. It ends up being a tie, 5-5 to Chiefs and Titans. Titans won the running back offensive line, interior defensive line, secondary, and linebacker positions, while the Chiefs won the quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, coaching, special teams, and edge positions in this matchup ultimately a tie I lean to the home team so the Chiefs in my book are slightly the more talented team going into the AFC championship let me know who you guys believe is the more talented team is it as close as I say do you think the Chiefs are a lot more talented do you think the Titans are the more talented team let me know in the comment section below it's Mitch thanks for watching and peace out